Welcome to the Butterfly Effect. I'm Chris Horner. This is stage three of Tour of Romandy 2022. Now, when today's stage starts, it's much like yesterday's stage, but the climbs are just a little bit longer. So there's some question on whether or not if the stage is gonna be identical to yesterday's outcome, with of course, Ethan Hader from Team Enos winning the stage and Enos controlling that stage two all the way to the finish. Today's stage, with the climbs being a little bit, little bit steeper and a little bit longer, it could change. But when you really look at today's climbs at about four to five kilometers long and under 5%, most of the time what I like to say is that everybody can climb in the professional peloton until we start getting over 6%. So when you see these climbs and they're under six and it's just a hair under five, it starts leaving a little bit of questions on how exciting the race can be. Because when we watch yesterday's race being controlled throughout the whole stage from Enos, today you gotta believe if you're sitting in the Enos bus, the director is looking at his team, he's thinking Garrett Thomas is way back on general classification. Luke Plapp is just a little bit in front of him by a few seconds. So there's not much chance of making a run at the general classification on a stage like today. But we have Ethan Hader here. He won stage two, so why not let's ride for Ethan Hader here on stage three and try to get three stage wins here at Tour of Romany because general classification is looking a little bit thin at this point in time for Tour of Romany. Now, when the racing starts, three riders up the road. It's Remy Cavagna from Quick Step, Nans Peters from AG2R, and Chris Nylans from Israel Premier Tech. Chris Nylans will take the KOM points and he'll get himself into the KOM jersey by the end of today's stage three. Their gap at about four minutes, solid lead, and there's solid three riders up there with a lot of power. We're all familiar with these three riders. They're in breakaways often and they put on big, big shows throughout the European Peloton. Racing days, not necessarily winning big, but Nans Peters has won good stages. Remy Cavagna has done big, big attacks at the end of bike races and put on big shows. And of course, Chris Nylance from Israel Premier Tech, we see him often near the end of the crunch time on hard stage races. So you know with these three riders, there's some power up the road. Problem is, Enos. Like I said, when we're talking about yesterday's stage, they won, so you know they're gonna get on the front at some point in time. Yumbo Visma rode throughout the early part of today's stage, leaving that gap, like I said, at about four minutes, and then with 60 kilometers to go, here we got start seeing the tactics of today's stage three. It's Enos on the front with DSM. Now, earlier we saw some interviews. We saw the interview from Rowan Dennis. He says he's feeling good. That's a good sign because we know he's here to race for general classification. He's time trialing well and he's climbing well. Now, when we go to Garrett Thomas's interview that was early in today's stage, we'll see that he's talking about the tactics of yesterday's race and he's talking about how he took Ethan Hader and he said, Ethan, just trust us, stay with us, and we will deliver you to the finish line, which they did. Ethan Hader won. So Garrett Thomas says, why not try it again today? So we already know their MO from the interview from Garrett Thomas himself. Now, with DSM on the front and with Enos riding on the front, those three breakaway riders, that time just keeps coming down with every 10 kilometers passing. The time's going to three minutes, to two minutes, to one and a half. Now, when we get into the big highlights of today's stage, has to be the two finishing climbs. They're about four or five kilometers long, under 5%, like I already said, and they come just under 22 kilometers to go, and then just around 10 kilometers to go, they'll summit about seven and have a descent, and then a flat run into today's sprint finish. Now, with two, with two climbs left to go in the stage, the front breakaway of three, their gap is all the way down to about 40 seconds when the climb starts. We saw already with Quick Steps Vernon, the sprinter here at Tour of Romandy, he went out the back before the penultimate climb started here at Tour of Romandy. Now when we get on the penultimate climb, it's the next sprinter that's gonna be the casualty because it's Fernando Gaviria, the Colombian for UAE Team Emirates, that's coming out the back. Up front, it's Enos at the front of the peloton on the penultimate climb, driving it just like they did on yesterday's stage two of Tour of Romandy. Now, they'll go over the penultimate climb all together, losing riders from the back, but a solid group of 70, 80 riders up there at the front. When they go over the climb, it's a little bit curb to curb because all the riders know that after the descent here, they're gonna start the last climb here of stage three of Tour of Romany. Last climb starts, it's Enos that drove into the final climb here of stage three, and then it's Steven Kreiswick, Jumbo Visma, that's on the front of the peloton. He's setting a good pace, not a blazing pace, and you can tell it's not blazing because the riders are still curb to curb behind the Jumbo Visma rider. And 
at this moment, if your Yumbo Visma is rolling Dennis, you don't want to blow this race up. You just want to keep the pace steady. Stay with your teammates. Don't break the number one rule on the butterfly effect. You always want a teammate around you. You still have more than 10 kilometers to go in the race, and you have two teammates in this front group with Sepp Kuss and, of course, Steven Kreiswick on the front of the group. Perfect scenario for Roan Dennis right now to protect the general classification lead here at Tour of Romany. Stay with your teammates. If you have a mechanical, if you have a flat, you always have teammates around you. But keep the pace just fast enough where you can deter any major attacks. Now, Stephen Kreiswick could do a great job on the early part of the last climb here at Tour of Romany until it's Moby Stars Verona that throws in a big attack. The group behind is getting a little excited as it's UAE Team Emmers throwing in the next attack, and then it's Sepp Kuss, the American for Yumbo Visma, that covers this attack. He's not going to pull through. He wants to do the same thing that his teammate Stephen Kreiswick was doing. Just neutralize the field, try to slow it down, and bring it all back together for your race leader, Ron Dennis. Sepp Kuss does the tactic exactly perfect as he kills that move, and then it's Bahrain victorious, Gino Mater that throws in the next attack. With his attack, he'll bring back the Movistar Rider Verona up the road. That attack will get neutralized, and then the last attack before the summit of today's stage, with just about 500 meters to go, it's UAE Team Emirates throwing in a big attack. It's Mark Hershey, Ben O'Connor, Felix Grosschartner, and Rowan Dennis, race leader himself. He's covering this attack. Perfect tactics throughout this last climb here at Tour of Romandy for Yumbo Visma. Remember, they controlled the beginning part of the climb with Steven Kreiswick, had Sepp Kuss jump into the middle to cover the tax there, and now over the summit is race leader Ron Dennis doing his own work on the front, covering the dangerous attacks. That tack will get neutralized from behind as it's Bahrain Victorious that pulls the four leaders back. Now, going down the descent, it's Israel Premier Tech on the front. They want a field sprint for their sprinter, Patrick Bevitt. Behind, Ineos is back there too. That's the second team that wants a sprint, sprint here on stage three. With just under four kilometers to go, it's Intermarche with two teammates that come to the front here at Tour of Romandy. When they come into the left hairpin turn, the second Intermarche rider, he opens up the gap to Rain Tireme, and Rain Tireme is going solo here with three kilometers to go at Tour of Romandy. He comes off the descent with about an eight second gap on the Israel Premier Tech led Peloton behind. That group has gotten re reduced. Now it's 50, 60 riders back there. Israel Premier Tech is on the front. We're going to see in the picture, it's G. Thomas looking back over his shoulder, trying to figure out where his sprinter is, Ethan Hader. Hader's locked on just behind G. Thomas. G. Thomas will take the front and start pulling with 1.5 kilometers to go. Up front, it's Rain Tarame still has a gap with one kilometer to go of about five seconds. Just behind with 900 meters to go, Mario Schmidt, quick step, throws in attack on the left side. Now, Mario Schmidt had pulled a little bit on the descent. Now he's throwing an attack with 900 meters to go all the way on the left side of the road. At 800 meters to go, Garrett Thomas has had enough. Luke Platt comes through to take a pull and help Ethan Hader at a shot at winning here at stage three of Tour of Romany. Luke Platt will pull a couple hundred meters as Mario Schmidt, the quick step rider, swings back to the center of the road. Luke Platt will look left over his shoulder, see a sprinter there with about 500 meters to go. And with that, he'll pull off, leaving Ethan Hader up to the wheel of Mario Schmidt, the quick step rider. They pull back, Rain Tyrame, about that same point in time. Mario Schmidt now is going full gas into the last corner here at stage three of Tour of Romandy and just hard on the pedals. Behind, though, here's the problem. I got to point this out, guys, because Mario Schmidt from Quick Step, he's on the front pulling full gas this whole time and hasn't allowed the group to slow down. But he's got his teammate. Look in the picture right back there. His Quick Step teammate, Mikhail Honore, is just in the back of the picture there with Schmidt going full percent at the front with still 300 meters to go with sprinter Ethan Hader on his wheel and race leader Rowan Dennis behind on Ethan Hader's wheel. Now, Rowan Dennis does a little bit of bumping with Nicholas Arndt, the DSM rider on the right. We'll see him bump. We'll see him look over to the left to give Nicholas Arndt that look like, hey, guy, I'm race leader here. But when we're talking Rowan Dennis, at this point in time, Rowan Dennis, everything's fair game. It's 250 meters to go into the last corner here at Stage 3, Tour of Romany. Mario Schmidt is still riding on the front 100%. They'll fly into that right turn, come out of the right turn with Mario Schmidt on the front. 
Ethan Hader sit in second wheel. Third wheel, it'll be Patrick Bevan. Like I said, he'll punch it from third position. Start his acceleration as they come out of the right-hand corner with about 200 meters to go. Behind, as it passes, Ethan Hader. Hader switches from the quick step rider's wheel onto Israel Premier Tech's wheel as Ethan Hader's trying to get back into this race to win here at stage three and bring three stage wins at for Toro Romy to Team Enios. Behind, Rowan Dennis has started his acceleration to the line, but up front, Patrick Bevan is not contested by any of the guys behind as he sails through to take a big World Tour victory here at Tour of Romandy for Israel Premier Tech. Now behind second, Ethan Hader will cross the line. Third will be race leader Rowan Dennis. Congratulations, Rowan Dennis, on getting third place time bonuses here on today's sprint finish here at Tour of Romandy. Now, when we look at today's stage and we break it down, I want to point one thing out with Ineos' tactics. Now, I agree with them 100%, but there's a side effect of today's race with Enios riding on today's stage. Now, they don't have a whole lot of hope for general classification, but they still do have some hope back there with Luke Plapp and Garrett Thomas that are 30 to 40 seconds back on general classification. But I agree with the tactics 100%, so nobody's a knucklehead here. I would have done the same thing, especially when I see the form from Ethan Hader. But he did crash a couple days ago in his interview today. He said he was feeling a little bit stiff. And it's always two days later that you start to feel the stiffness in the body from crashes. Now, one other thing. The most important reason I, I want to bring up today's stage with the tactics of Team Inos. And again, I agree with them. I would have done it the same way. But there's give and take when you do these tactics. If they ride today, they take the pressure off Yumbo Visma from 60 kilometers all the way to the finish of today's stage three. That means Sepp Kuss, Stephen Kreiswick didn't have to ride at all with the exception of the final climb here at Tour of Romandy. That means when we go into tomorrow's stage four of Tour of Romandy, Jumbo Visma have a couple more guys that are a little bit more fresh. So when you're Team Enios and you ride on stage two and you ride on stage three helping Jumbo Visma rest, now when you get to stage four, those extra riders from Yambo Visma, Sepp Kuss and Steven Kreiswick, they're going to be a little bit more fresh. And remember, tomorrow's last big, big stage here at Tour of Romandy, the final climb is about 30 kilometers long. They count it as two climbs in that 30 kilometer section, but it's steep, it's hard. We're not talking about four and five percent. We're talking about seven and eight percent climbs for 30K. So now with Team Enos, they don't win today's stage. They end up finishing second with Ethan Hader. But the big side effect is that they help Yumbo Visma stay a bit fresher for tomorrow's stage. Now, other teams to watch out for on tomorrow's mountainous stage with the summit finish. You got to keep an eye out on Bora Hansgrohe and you have to keep an eye out on Bahrain Victorious because they have three riders up there in the top of the general classification. All quality riders with Dylan Toons, Damiano Caruso, and Gino Mater. One other team that has three riders up there, UAE Team Emirates. Brandon McNulty is there. Aruso is there, the Spanish rider, and Mark Hershey is there. When you have three riders from one team, that means there's a lot of tactics to play. That final climb, they call it two climbs. I look at it as one. 30 kilometers in length, that's a long time to be climbing. So if Yumbo Vismas, Rowan Dennis is left isolated with more than 5, 10 kilometers on this final climb, he could be in trouble when you see three Bahrain Victorious riders and three UA Team Emirates riders that can pull all kinds of tactical attacks on the final climb here at Tour of Romandy on the last big mountain stage. Make sure you guys tune in tomorrow. Make sure you pay attention to those teams with multiple numbers that have a shot of winning here at Tour of Romany by gaining time on Rowan Dennis. Now, if I'm Rowan Dennis, once you get isolated, you might just have to light everybody up when it comes down to it if, if you have the legs to do it on tomorrow's stage with a couple kilometers still to go and gain some more time before the final time trial here at Tour of Romany. Make sure you guys like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next edition of The Butterfly Effect.